Welcome to Downshift. My name is Matt. And this, again, is the Hyundai Palisade. We just did a review against this thing and actually compared it against the new Nissan Pathfinder. And we've done a standalone review a couple months ago and another one within like a year. So we've, we've been through this thing quite a few times. So what we're gonna do today is something just a touch different. So I wanna take a minute to thank my mom for going through all of the details with this thing and adding a different perspective. Now we're gonna cover what this thing is to start off with. This was a brand new product for Hyundai in 2018. I was actually at the Detroit Auto Show when they unveiled this thing and it is a fantastic three row flagship SUV for the brand. It competes against things like the Honda Pilot, the Toyota Highlander, the Chevy Traverse, the Ford Explorer, and so on. And of those, the only competitor that really comes close in my eyes is the sister vehicle, the Kia Telluride. Ah, and then, under the hood here, we have a 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6. Now it's a big engine and it has no turbo and it has no hybrid system, which is weird for being a 22 model year vehicle. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you get horrific fuel economy, though this thing runs on an Atkinson cycle, so it does make an attempt to be efficient. And you can also dial it into eco mode, which will help conserve fuel. This thing gets about 19 MPG city and about 26 MPG highway. Over this past week, we've been observing like high 22s, low 23s, which actually is pretty similar to what we got in the Mazda CX-5 four-cylinder turbo. And that is a compact SUV. This is a three-row family SUV, much bigger, much bigger engine. And to get similar fuel economy is pretty impressive from this thing. Oh, and the engine also makes 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. So it has some pretty good grunt. Now, all of that power from that engine goes through a silky smooth eight-speed automatic transmission. It's very good, but then it goes to all four wheels. You have Hyundai's H-Track system, and it's predominantly front-wheel drive biased, but you do have the ability to lock your center differential, which will lock the amount of power that goes to the front and back wheels. That simulates something similar to a 4x4 system that you would get in something like a Jeep or a 4Runner or a Bronco or a more traditional body-on-frame off-roader. And with decent tires. I might upgrade the tires if I wanted to take this thing off the trail, but if you did want to take this thing off the road and onto a trail, you probably could do so from light to moderate off-roading. Now around back, my tester is not equipped with the tow package, so we don't have a hitch here, but if you do have a receiver, you can tow up to 5,000 pounds with this Palisade. It's pretty good. And then behind the wheel, this thing is a joy to drive. The power delivery is good and you can tailor how aggressive you want the car to be based on your drive modes. If you want to drive more spiritedly, you've got sport mode. If you want to drive more conservatively, save fuel, you've got your eco mode. Of course, there's not a lot of feedback in the steering, but this isn't a sports car. But then again, this isn't a sports car. So why does it turn in and handle so well? but this is still a family three row SUV. So most of the time you want it to be just easy enough to get along with. And it is, it's brilliantly quiet in here. It's incredibly refined. The power delivery is good and smooth and you don't get a lot of exhaust note, which is kind of nice if you want something relaxing. And the suspension, the way that it holds the car together, you do have that sporty aspect that it holds the car up. You don't get a lot of body roll when you go into a corner, but that's not compromising then and making it too stiff over mild road imperfections. This road that we're on now isn't very good and it's perfectly comfortable. It's very soft, not a lot of bumps are coming into the cabin. Very good ride on this Palisade. And if you do end up taking this thing off the road, you probably want good reversing cameras or 360 cameras. And this has a fantastic system. In reverse, you have a bunch of different angles. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast, the settings. And then when you go into drive, you have front facing cameras too at lower speeds, which is perfect for off-roading or navigating parking lots. And then when it comes to the trunk, with the third row up, you still have a reasonable amount of space back here. And if you need more, you have a pretty big secret compartment underneath and that's where your jack is and some of your first aid equipment. Now, the interesting thing here is if this isn't enough room for you, you have pretty convenient buttons that will lower and raise the third row right here automatically. And with the third row down, you have a perfectly flat floor. Fantastic for loading stuff. And when you want it back up, you just push the same buttons and they'll come back up. Now the third row here is not necessarily designed for people over 5'10". I wouldn't be incredibly comfortable here, but if the second row moved up a little bit, I would be okay. But even if you are under 5'10", most of the time you're gonna have kids back here anyway, and they have plenty of stuff to play with. They've got USB ports, they've got cup holders, and they have automatic reclining in a third row. And with any three row family SUV or vehicle of any kind, access to that third row is pretty important. Now you do have a couple options here. This controls your tilt 
but you can press this button right here, which will automatically get the second row chair out of the way for you. And then getting back there, it's never totally easy, but it's a lot easier than a lot of other vehicles that we've tested here on downshift. Yes, but the second row is where your passengers are gonna spend most of their time. And that's great because it's super comfy in here. You have a lot of space, you have a lot of glass, the seats are incredibly comfy, they recline, and they slide, and they're heated and cooled. And if that wasn't enough, you have your own dedicated sunroof back here for your rear passengers. Now one quote unquote miss for this thing is you don't have a rear entertainment option. You don't have screens that tack onto the back of the headrest. You don't have a screen that comes down from the center of the roof. Now that's okay to me because most of the time kids have their own iPads, phones, their own screens that they can bring with. And if you really want, you can attach something to the back of the headrest anyway. But you do have a 12 volt outlet here and you have a fully dedicated 115 volt house outlet. So the charging capabilities are fantastic. You still have USBs on the sides of the front seats. And to keep all the glare off your screens, you have sunshades. Then the driver and passenger seats, they are supremely comfortable. They really are. And I really love the stitching pattern and the perforation that they have. I mean, not just on the front seats, but it's carried throughout the cabin. And not just on the seats, but you have it on the door cards here. And just like the second row seats, your front seats are heated, they are cooled, and you have a heated steering wheel. The only thing that they don't do is massage. You gotta go up to Genesis to get that and this thing has a plethora of storage options. You have a huge cavity with charging and storage underneath your center console. You have your traditional center console with removable shelf. You also have charging down in there. And if you push this button here, it exposes the cup holder area and it can be customized to have more room for cups or more room for other stuff. And here again, you have more charging, USB and your wireless charger right here. Ah, but on the topic of charging, I should say, this has a nice wireless charging pad. It has one of the best wireless charging pads that I've tested in a lot of the vehicles over the past year, but it doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay. So you have to end up plugging in your phone to use CarPlay anyway, which is of course what I'd like to use. So it kind of makes the wireless charging pad redundant. I'm not gonna use it because I wanna use CarPlay. Now, one of the things that I really like, and a lot of people that I've shown this car to really like, is the fact that you have hard buttons to control your infotainment system, your HVAC system, your heated seat, your heated steering wheel, and your cooled seat, and things of that nature. One thing that is a little bit interesting to get used to, and you're starting to see this a lot more in other modern vehicles, is having this push button gear selector here. The idea is that this, of course, frees up the center console to have that added storage bin underneath, having an electronic gear selector so you don't have a mechanical linkage taking up a bunch of space so you can use that for storage now. Now in terms of drive modes you have five drive modes that you can select from and you have them on this little wheel here. We talked about the center button which will lock your center differential so you have equal torque split front and rear axle but there's not necessarily a dedicated off-road mode. The closest thing that you would use is something like a snow mode on sand, mud, any loose surface but you do have an eco mode which helps you get better fuel economy on the road because let's face it you're going to be on the road 99 point something percent of the time. You you have a comfort mode, which is your normal daily driving. You've got a sport mode, which tunes things up, drops you in a lower gear, and makes it feel a lot more sporty and fun. And then you've got a smart mode, which the car kind of guesses how your driving style is and puts the car in what it thinks would be the ideal setting. Now, the interesting thing is all of these different modes have different graphics that go along with them. And by that, I mean the comfort mode, the sport mode, and the eco mode have different graphics and different colors. But comfort, smart, and snow mode all have the same graphic. Now, moving up from your center stack, we talk about this infotainment system. It's a nice big screen, it's got good graphics, it's fast, and it's touchscreen. Most of the time, you're gonna have your phone plugged in, you'll probably be using Spotify, Apple CarPlay, uh, Maps, whatever. But if you don't, you can go in and play the sounds of nature, like a snowy village or something like that. Or, if you're 90 years old, you can go to the radio, and it has a nice little graphic to remind you of when your homeboy, Thomas Edison, invented the first light bulb. Returning to the home menu, you hit the home button up here and you're transported back here and you can select passenger talk. And this is a really cool thing for a three row SUV. You hit this button and it will record your voice up here and play it over the speakers in the back so you don't have to be turning your head, not looking at the road, to yell at your kids. Check it out. Can you hear me? It's got a little bit of echo in here. I hope it picks up on camera. Now when you're on passenger talk, it will continue to go unless you hit end here or you can hit the hang up button on your steering wheel. Another really cool thing, especially if you have kids, is they have a quiet mode right here. So basically what this does is it cuts any speaker volume to the rear and puts it only up into the front, and it dials down the volume from the front speakers to level seven, which is quiet enough to apparently let kids sleep. And then speaking of sound, what you have for an audio system in here is Harman Kardon audio, which is like something that you get 
in a BMW. It's a very good sound, it throws great sound around the cabin, and they have pretty cool speaker covers to kind of match the interior ambiance. Ah, and then last thing about sound, you have a head-up display here, which gives you a bunch of information, namely of which, if you're 90 years old and you are listening to the radio, you can adjust your radio station and it will reflect it in the head-up display, so you know exactly what station you're listening to. But, one of my favorite things about the head-up display is not only does it tell you your speed and the speed limit, but it'll also give you the status of Hyundai's beautiful highway driving assist systems. Ah yes, Hyundai's highway driving assist systems, HDAS. You've probably heard me go on and on about this system, and I'm a big fan of it. I think it does a great job. It's not something like uh, Cadillac Super Cruise, where it'll actually change lane for you if you put your indicator on. However, it does a phenomenal job of keeping you in your lane, steering for you. It's not super invasive. You can trust it really, really well, even in blistery conditions or uh, raining conditions. But as a, as a caveat to that, and with any other car that we review, always pay attention no matter what autopilot system you're using. This is a good one, but it will not completely drive the car for you. And then looking down, you've got a digital gauge cluster, and it's fully digital, and it looks great even when it's super bright out. And it, of course, changes with your different modes. And of course, by changes, I mean there's three different graphics and three different colors for the five modes, as we covered before. Now let's check out the outside. Now, this Palisade tester that I have with me here today is the calligraphy trim, which means it's the top of the top. And as such, you get specific calligraphy trim stuff, namely this different grill pattern and those 20 inch wheels over there. It's not objectively quite as attractive as its sister vehicle, the Telluride. However, with these changes to the grill and the wheels, I think it looks pretty expensive, especially wearing a Hyundai badge. And then non calligraphy specific stuff and just general Palisade stuff here is Namely this paint, this is like a really cool dimensional like purple plum paint that in low light almost looks black and I really like that. You have your typical waterfall LED systems and you have full LED systems with a Hyundai badge in your headlight casing. It looks really cool. Around the side the profile looks pretty normal. It's not a lot going on but it's a three row family SUV so that's pretty typical. And then around back you have again really interesting lighting elements for your taillights. You have palisades spelled out across your tailgate and you have a dual exit exhaust on one side. So that's it. That's everything to do with the 2022 Hyundai Palisade. And what's my final verdict on this car? Well like every other time I've driven it blows my mind that it's such a complete and elegant and well-equipped package for what money Hyundai is charging for this thing. Now, with that being said, this new calligraphy trim tops the 50 grand mark as tested here. So if you're gonna look at one of these and you want all the bells and whistles and all the kit that we talked about here, make sure you have your wallet with you because it is kind of expensive. However, when you think about all that you're getting for this amount of money, it's still a pretty killer bargain if you ask me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.